There you go. That's going to be my guess. Yeah. According to the cloud is you have to have good upload speed. So if you don't have good upload speed, it's going to be spotty as it's recording. If you record to your computer, then it'll be, you know, uh, high definition or whatever you want. That's the only upside or downside. Just FYI, having done this many times. Okay. Because generally, like I said, it doesn't ask me that. It just says to record. So well, I just want it to like store it in the place where my other things are. Where have you been storing them? Do you know? In the cloud. That's why I picked oh, up. Then you've got it there. Well... <laughs> I don't want to fuck up. I just want it to be normal, okay? Yeah, no, I know. There's always uh, in our world, right? If you yes, I mean, I don't know. Are you sure you want to stop? I'm just gonna go with this. We're just gonna. Oh, it's fine. Go ahead. Do what you need to do. Go ahead. Angels are with me. They know that I picked the right option. How's that? There you go. So thank you for already taking some notes. Um, I don't know if you would like to just go through what you've got or if you want me to ask these questions and then you can. Yeah, go ahead and ask the questions. Go for it, Ann. Perfect. Cool. Um, so I guess what I'd really like to understand more about is um, how long were you sick with the Lyme disease before um, you got better? Okay. Yeah, and maybe I'll start telling a little something about myself too, in case that's useful um, yeah. for your audience. So yeah, I'm a integrative functional medicine physician. My name is Morgan Camp, MD. Um, I've been working in the functional integrative medical space since 2004, 2005. Actually started learning in residency. Um, have a passion for uh, illnesses and conditions that the mainstream uh, overlooks or ignores or pushes, puts in a box and treats with a with a pill unsuccessfully. Um, and so I've specialized in, you know, a lot of different things. And I, I've, you know, as I was telling you earlier, and I've, I've had most of these, most of the illnesses I've treated, I've had myself, including Lyme. So uh, I first got, um, unbeknownst to me, I first got Lyme when I was probably 10 years old. I got bit by hundreds of ticks one day when I was hiking in the forest. Um, I was in Georgia. I grew up in Georgia. So no one knew about hundreds Lyme. Of ticks? What's that? Hundreds. I'm sorry. Hundreds of ticks? Hundreds. Yeah, I got, you know. But the shamans would call like an initiation of some sort. But, you know, I didn't realize it as such at age 10. But my whole leg was covered in ticks. Um, and, you know, my family solution and, you know, I don't have any animosity towards them. But their solution was we stuck my leg in the swimming pool to drown the ticks. That was the solution. That was all the care I received. Um, and um, before that, I was in great health. After that, I was mostly in great health until... Um, I did get a lot of weird viruses and little things off and on over the next few years from mono to parvovirus, which was really weird. Nobody gets that um, to, to other things. Um, and then I was pretty much fine until med school. I got vaccine injury. I got vaccinated to go to Nepal into, after med school, got vaccine injury, picked up parasites in Nepal, and then a lot of uh, a lot of illnesses started then, and that was really my, you know, path opened up to all the, you know, all the the, the illnesses that I had to take on to to learn how to heal. Um, and then again, at around age thirty seven, um, yeah, around age thirty seven, I was again bitten by ticks, and it took about six months after the tick bites for me to realize that I had had a babesia meningitis. Um, and I was having quite intense pain, quite intense headaches, quite intense emotional outbursts, insomnia, um, et cetera. Babesia causes like a very specific type of headache for me and for a lot of people, like an occipital headache that just burns in the back of your head. Um, and uh, that started and, you know, it took me a good six months or so to get diagnosed with that. I, I rejected, I denied that that's what it was. I couldn't even remember that I'd been bitten by ticks six months earlier because the Babesia created such a brain fog. Um, it wasn't until after the first, I took one day of treatment and then I remember that I'd been bitten by ticks. Um, and then the, the, the saga of getting healed from all these started and that has been a long, long path. And as many of your listeners know that the healing's worse than the illness in many cases, it's been treating Babesia for sure was for a while. Um, and it took many years. Yeah. Yeah. It took many years for me to, um, to figure out what was going on. I would get treatments and then stop treatments and, you know, new symptoms and all kinds of weird things happening. So, yeah. Yeah, it took, took quite a while. And do you think that, 
like the parvovirus, do you think that came to you from a tick or just because your immune system was banged up that it just... No, no, I get a good question. No idea at all. I mean, I know there's constellation of viruses and um, I mean, every Lyme, every tick bite can bring a different number of viruses, bacteria and protozoa like Babesia. Um, and I have no idea if, if I got that from the tick bite or, or what else. It very well could have been. Yeah, I don't know. Don't know. Likely had mold in the house growing up, um, too. So I likely had some immunosuppression from that. Um, you know, yeah. Okay. So then, um, I guess you've sort of answered that a little bit in what you've just responded with, too. But, um, when you were little, I if I understood you correctly, you had some things that happened to you afterwards, some weird viruses and things that set in, but did you know right away that that was from the tick bite? Oh, no, no, I didn't get any diagnosis of Lyme until I was 37. No, I had no, no, so I had, you know, 27 years of no diagnosis and yeah, I had back pain, which was likely Lyme related. I had some shoulder bursitis and shoulder injuries. I played football, had many concussions. Um, yeah, so a lot of a lot of it didn't manifest on the Lyme front until I had, you know, numerous other weaknesses in my body, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In the second round of infections, that's when they really took off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've thought about that before. Maybe you could weigh in on this, but do you think that it's possible that people get bit a few times before that anything happens almost like the scales, right? Like they're, they're okay. They're staying somewhat balanced. They've been bit a couple of times, but then all of a sudden it just tips the scale completely out and that's when they get sick. Do you, sure. Ab absolutely. You know, every case I'm sure is very different, but absolutely. And you, you know, it could be a different constellation again of infections every time you're bitten. So and it's impossible to know what those constellations are because we don't have tests for many of the infections that are out there, right? I mean, there's so many in every region. There's a different strain of uh, Borrelia, different strain of, uh, you know, all these different different micro strains that just aren't, aren't even tested for. Mm -hmm. um, and not to mention all the viruses that we don't even know exist. So, yeah, it, it's likely that's the case. And um, for me, the second time when I really got it, I was susceptible because I just had a major skiing accident six months earlier and had been in major, major pain and major stress from work and um, yeah, insomnia and chronic and massive pain um, for six months leading up to the tick bite. So yeah, that was a different, that was a different setting when, when I got that second round of infections and, you know, I mean, you know, and then, you know, what distinguishes a healthy person who gets a tick bite and, and doesn't get Lyme disease versus someone else. And, you know, there's a lot of variables there from genetics and, susceptibility to Lyme, but there's also stress and stressors and other comorbidities like you're talking about and, and other variables and certainly stress, pain, insomnia from pain um, and stress from trying to manage my practice while unable to walk and sleep and move, you know, that, that was quite challenging then to get bit by the ticks. And then of course it was just my, you know, at that point, it was just something I had to go through to, to get this, to, 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 to learn to heal this and, and to go through that process. Yeah. Yeah. It was quite a, quite a long, quite a long struggle. <laughs> yeah. And so you're making me think about though, in a sense, and when you talked about it being an initiation too, as a, a young child, when you got bit by hundreds of ticks, like, do you feel like this is something that um, ultimately has bettered your life? I know that's maybe a weird question to ask, but do you feel like this is more maybe secretly it was a blessing or um, oh, absolutely. how are you yeah. feeling about that? Absolutely. You know, I mean, let me answer that in a couple of ways. You know, one, I think the most important thing that that we that, that's going to help anyone in, with any chronic illness or Lyme especially is, you know, what's the story you tell yourself about yourself? What's your story you tell yourself about your illness? Are you a victim of a, of an, of a tick? Are you, are you in charge of your destiny? Did you choose this? Was there some other reason? Was it karmic or was it just, maybe you don't know, but you could suspend belief and say, maybe it's for your best interest. Um, you know, in my, in my experience, anytime you can look at it, you know, if reframe illness in a way that, that you can see the benefit of it, you're going to, you're going to get a lot, you're going to heal a lot faster. 
and and likely have a healing, right? Um, you know, it's a lot of the work that shamans do, right? You're, they're just helping you learn through the experience the key nuggets of of uh, of the reason you went through that. What were the learning opportunities? What were the lessons you learned? What are the, you know, how has that helped you? So yes, it's helped me, you know, having limes helped me tremendously. You know, I, I literally have had, you know, in addition to Lyme disease, I've uh, had mold, quite severe, severe mold illness. It's nearly killed me a couple times. I've had chronic lung infections. Like I said, I had vaccine injuries. I had trigeminal neuralgia. I've had herniated discs. I've had many, many, many broken bones, dozens of concussions. Um, and those are, you know, not to mention all the, all the little funny other little things. There's a lot of other little things. So, you know, I, I see it all as I, you know, I, I came here for a couple of reasons. One, you know, the, the learning that I've received through this has allowed me to help others. I don't treat Lyme disease patients, but I've learned a lot through this process on how to support people on every level. And um, yeah, and Lyme is, you know, to, to heal from Lyme has, you know, uh, took, took a lot, like, you know, the questions, you know, I could ask myself about that, you know, or, okay, Lyme's a parasite. So, you know, how was I acting like a parasite, right? What kind of parasitic behaviors did I have in my life? you know, that, that, the, that the, the tick was trying to show me. So yeah, a, a shaman pointed out to me that the tick initiation that I had and ticks are very much um, medicine of, if I'm correct, around boundaries, right? So ticks violate your boundaries, come in and bite you, you know? So this, this is very much about boundaries and energetic boundaries, you know, where was I crossing one other people's boundaries and where was I letting them cross mine? So, you know, through this whole process, I've become much better, more clearly to find who I am and where my boundaries are. Um, not to mention, you know, absolutely. So I don't, um, yeah, so it's absolutely also brought me to 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 learn to work with my, my consciousness on a daily basis, right? So it's not, you know, I, I studied in Nepal, I lived in monasteries, I've worked with Buddhists and I've treated lamas and, you know, I've, I've done months and months and years of meditation. And, you know, you think when you're a student and an initiate that you're, you, you get to, somehow you get to a state of consciousness where you don't have to do anything like the teacher has this and they do that, but that's not really what it is. It's more like on a daily basis, you learn to cultivate your consciousness in a certain way. So these, and these chronic illnesses have um, forced me to do that. And, and, and I think that's a key for a lot of people. It's just a simple like gratitude practice. So that's helped me tremendously through my life to train my mind to wake up first thing in the morning to be grateful for the the health that I have today and for the possessions that I have and for the you know the um you know the nice blanket that you know just simple little things like nice blanket and comforter um and in the nice food that I have and the nice environment that I live in just daily being grateful for those and daily being grateful that I you know not that I don't have an illness because what we focus on grows so I don't focus on negative things I focus on the positive and so for me, Lyme has taught me very much to focus on the positive, focus on the days when I feel good, you know, and, and it's, there, there's so many lessons there, um, you know, on, on, that's on one hand. And on the other hand, when I was going through it and healing from Lyme and all these other illnesses, I was forced very much to learn to, to, to appreciate myself, um, to allow myself time and space for healing to allow myself time and space to do nothing when I could do nothing and not to force myself to try to do something to meet someone else's standards and someone else's needs. Um, but okay. Yeah. I can't move today because of X, Y, or Z. You know what? Maybe I'm not supposed to move today. Maybe my healing is to do nothing and to just be here and, and to allow the pain to go through me and to allow this to, to heal and just to feel into it and, and to transmute that, the pain and symptoms of, of whatever illness I was going through at the time. And so um, just learning that has really helped me, you know, helped me tremendously. And, and like you were mentioning earlier, you know, this might sound like a lot to some people who are just coming upon these concepts, but as you learn these processes, then over time, more and more, you actually can heal faster and, and, and go through illnesses quicker. Um, so you know, and, and you, it, it is actually just an art form that, that we all learn how to, we all can learn how to do. And, and the big one is surrendering to the illness, right? It's like, on one hand, it's not denying that you have an illness. On the other hand, it's not like wearing the, the flag too high that you have an illness and instead finding a middle ground that, yes, I have it. 
and it's not me. It doesn't define all of, of who I am. Um, maybe I have it forever. Maybe I don't. Um, but today I have the symptom and I'm just going to, you know, surrender to it um, and pray. You know, so actually prayer also is a big thing that I learned through this. And that's that's helped me heal tremendously on, on, on and help me find the path to healing. You know, because there's there's so much confusion in the world out there today. There's so much confusion about Lyme. What doctors can you trust? Which ones are just motivated by dollars? Which ones are just motivated to give you these super expensive treatments so they can make more money? Which ones are actually going to help you? What about this, that, or the other? And you know, I, I think it's critical for your listeners. One, to you got to find a healing team that you can trust. One. Mm-hmm. And two, you've got to learn how to discern like what is a good treatment, what's right for you. Because there's so many people out there, oh yeah, I got healed by this miraculous thing. That's what you need. No, that's what helped you. Just because it helps you didn't mean it's going to help me. And then everybody does that. So everybody does that from doctors to healers to massage therapists to acupuncturists, everybody. They, you know, there's no miracle cure for Lyme. There's no miracle cure for a chronic disease. Lyme attacks any area of weakness in your body. So if you have any area of weakness, you must fix it. Whether it's cavitations in your mouth, whether it's bad digestion, whether it's uh, concussions in your in your in your brain, you name it. If you don't fix it in Lyme, that's where the, the organisms will go, and they will live there until you get sick or until you get immune compromised again, and then they will come out and 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 destroy, and you just bring out symptoms again, you know, until you, you know. So it's a constant like, what can you do to help make yourself better? You know, and so that that's one thing that helped me tremendously is learning that, you know, I wish I wish I had treated my been treated in a different order. I should have started with like treating cavitations, which I didn't treat till the end. I, I wish I had been more aware of like EMFs and, the, and what they were doing to disturb sleep and energy and such and treated that. Um, I wish, you know, these sorts of things, I wish I'd use maybe technology a little more. And I wish I'd maybe been a little more open to listening to other people's experience versus being a little hard headed and, you know, <laughs> know it all myself a little bit. So, um, yeah, th- those things, th- 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 that's a long answer to your question, but yeah, I learned a lot through the process. And again, in the end result is what's the story that I tell myself now about the, my experience is, is I think, you know, and, and whether it's true or not, doesn't necessarily matter, but, you know, I, I'm confident that I came here, you know, to pick up these, I came here to take on these illnesses. Um, one, because I had karma, I needed to clear from previous lives working to help others when maybe I had made some mistakes. That's one thing I learned through this. And two, um, I, um, yeah, this is how I help others. This is how I learn, you know, and I'm much better doctor as a consequence of having gone through this. I'm much more empathic and much more um, aware of, of what my patients are going through and what, what, how, how, how big of a struggle this is that people are going through. And, and, and you know, and, and those are the, the big lessons I've learned. And the, and the story I paint for myself now is that, hey, this is a hero's journey. And every day I'm here, I'm grateful for it. And what can I do now to, uh, you know, to help others with what I've learned? Yeah. Do you think that you had to go through this to become who you are? You know, yeah, I mean, yeah, I I think so. Yeah, I think in this life, absolutely. 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 And I was trying to think you had given me, there was something that you said in there that I was like, oh, that is such a good perspective. Um, I should have written it down. And I was like, oh, I've got a recording so I can go back and listen to that again. What Um, was what was, what was it in, in relation to? The shamans and um, how you look at the sickness. Um, the story you tell yourself, yeah, the, the, you know, the, the, the story you tell yourself or. Um, mm, it'll come back to me. Sorry. No problem at all. I'm like thinking about-, about so many things that you said. I'm like, oh God, yeah. And just gratitude and starting your day that way. And Um, I feel like slowly doing those little things again, you're like making little pebbles to form a big wall to be able to climb out of the space that you're in. Um, And just that you can actually accelerate things as you learn, accelerate the healing. Um, But also that makes me think about like, for you, you were sick for a really long time. 
if you knew what you know now then and you were able to have accelerated that I come back to this all the time it's like I just feel like the timeline that we're all on ultimately is exactly what we need to be on to get to where we need to go to evolve to the greater being and then for the greatest good of all um and so it's like I really want to learn how to speed things up and make people feel better faster but also that's the other thing that you touched on too it's like what works for me might not work for you and so that's a huge thing that I think people kind of miss sight of or lose sight of is that oh this works so good for this person why is this not working for me and then maybe they'll give up but that's the beautiful thing about the human body is that we have the option to do so many different choices and we have to be more like I kind of picture like an anatomy you know more um, flexible or freely floating in these things that we try to ourselves and if it's something that's like really awful or um, we know it doesn't feel good to us then we have the choice to change that um, and that is something that I've come across a lot with people with this treatment is like they just think that it's got to be one quick fix kind of a thing and unfortunately it's not and as you're describing to me it's more of a I hate to say it in a way like people are really like you're nuts but it's like it's a beautiful evolution of a, of a person right it's this really horrible thing that's happening to people but it's teaching you so many lessons and it's giving you such a different perspective and it's making you more empathic and it's giving you possibly making maybe burning off karma from a previous lifetime but certainly giving you better karma in future lifetimes I think um and just all the things that we can we can gain from it um I really choose try not to look at it as detrimental or something that's taken from me although I'm sure many of us could go there and thinking about your own struggle and the ability to not be able to walk like I didn't get to that point I had a lot of other horrible things but um, at least I could physically like, still sort of force myself to move. Um, but that's just so much to overcome. And that's so much to experience as a person. Um, and then to be able to come out on the other side where you are healthier, healed, hopefully, you know, that you're able to give your gifts back from what you've learned to help others. I just find that to be a really beautiful process to watch. And hindsight makes it a lot more beautiful than the actual process, I think, when you're going through it specifically as an individual absolutely yeah I mean I think the big thing you know the, the things that people miss um yeah what, what do people need to hear more than you know, you know mo most people who are in this situation that they, they don't want to hear one yeah they, they, like you're asking there's no there it's not on the healing is not on your own timeline one and two the sooner you realize that and sooner you like realize you have a chronic issue that needs time and space to heal. And the sooner you give the time and space to heal, the sooner you're going to get better. So the, 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 the earlier you decide that like, OK, I'm not going to, um, you know, push numb myself out and just use drugs or caffeine or whatever to push through my life to get more chores done to get more this done all that's doing is making it worse right pushing yourself further and further despite symptoms flaring up more and more is only delaying the progress and the inevitable conclusion of that is complete collapse and a worsening until your body finally listens so you can listen when you have small levels of symptoms and take the time to heal it or you can wait till the symptoms get a little worse or you can wait till they overwhelm you and you can't do anything else you know that's the a lot of people that's the choice they get and a lot of people only choose to do the what's needed of course when they can't do anything else and and you know and then unfortunately a lot of people have resources depleted at that time and a lot of other things depleted so you know it's like okay it's like your car, you know, do routine maintenance on yourself, you know, and, and much more than the average person is talking about routine maintenance, meaning any little issue anywhere, find the world's freaking expert on it, if you can afford it and get it treated. <laughs> right. Exactly. Oh, you know, and yeah. And the other thing is, you know, is like what we were just talking about is don't listen to people's healing miracles as something that's going to help you. Right. It may or may not help you listen, you know, healing miracles and healing treatments that bring a lot of, you know, instant success for people. It might have been that they did might have been that they had 99 treatments that led them to the point where that 100th one gave them the cure, but they wouldn't have gotten that cure unless they did the 99 before. OK, and so that's the treatment. So again, Lyme attacks any area of weakness in your body. If you don't, 
if you, if you don't correct all those area of weakness, you cannot get rid of the line more than likely unless you're really lucky. And some, I, I realize also not everyone has the path I do. I have, you know, in my career and work, I, I get to go the hard route for every, for those sorts of things. So I, you know, I have to carry it all the way to the end. A lot of people do get, can get off the exit ramp a little earlier than I and can get cures a little quicker than I can. I do realize that. Um, but for some people that can't, the reason is again, because you've got these other areas that you need to work on, right? Maybe the illness is pushing you to learn more about yourself and about your relationships to self and others. And, um, yeah, and, and or just to learn how to receive, right? To learn how to receive healing, you know, to learn how to receive that that magical healing energy that's available to us all. Um, there's a very good book that helped me to be healed by the earth. I do a lot of earth-based practices. So going out in nature, uh, the, 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 the book is very good. It's, it's a life story of a gentleman who nearly died and just went and laid on the earth and it healed him over time. And so it's really simple. Just go outside and touch the earth and put your entire focus and concentration where your body's touching the ground and just do it for as long as you can. Um, you know, you can do that with rocks, you can do that with soil, you can do that with trees and grass as you like. And, and, and it just allows you, you're just connecting to the earth element or to the nature elements. And there are elements in nature that, that are there to heal us if we ask. So a lot of what the shamans teach are building, are building communication and networks and relationships with elements that actually have the opportunity to help us on a, on a way that modern science has not looked at. Um, and so that's why a lot of these ancient healing modalities work is because you're building relationships with, with these greater forces in nature. And if you, you know, and the, and the shamans, in the, the work you do, you, when you work with uh, certain native traditions, you, you build relationships. You make, that's why the native, you make offerings to the earth and you make offerings and then you ask for help. So it's like a, a both a two-way street, you know? So these are a lot of the things that I've learned to do. And hopefully some of these are helpful to your listeners, but that book to be healed by the earth was quite useful for me and helped me a lot. It has a lot of very good practical tips on there that are free to use. Everybody can afford. <laughs> yes. How about that? Because that sometimes is what people will say. It's like, oh, that's such a luxury or whatever. And it's like, no, there's so many ways that you can actually help yourself that are not costly. Right. Yep. <clears throat> Such yeah. as like grounding or, or spending time with the earth in and of itself and um, yeah, looking for help. Yeah. And, and, and on that note about, you know, investment in self, I have to admit, I got a lot. I've gotten better and better the more I've invested in my health. The, the more I've spent on my health, the better it's gotten. And funny enough, it's also the more I've invested in my health, the more money I make. Um, it's an interesting circle there. Um, but I used to, you know, I struggled a lot at the beginning of this because I didn't want to pay for the right doctors. I didn't want to pay for the right treatments. I didn't pay want to pay for all this. I took the, okay, let's just do the three month treatment with a few herbs and think you're better and you get better for a few months. And then you have a relapse a little bit later when you go back to an old lifestyle that's not conducive to healing. And then, you know, and then after you beat your head on the wall from relapsing many, many times, eventually like, okay, you know what can we do more now? What can we do better? You know, it's not necessarily going overboard. You don't have to like buy every gadget in the world and do too much. But at the same time, what I, what I would recommend is getting a team of people that you can trust, whether that's, you know, uh, doctors, therapists, uh, nutritionists, acupuncturists, um, shamans, church members, whatever it is that, that can help you make decisions and people that can help you and they've got your back when you need it and can give you solid, unbiased uh, information and recommendations that you can trust. You know, and, and the other thing is a part of this is we're in an age where we're all called to learn more about our own inner discernment, own inner knowing. So that's also the big lesson for me around this is learning to trust myself and my own intuition and, and to know what I need and to learn to, to, to cultivate that on a, on a greater, deeper level. Yeah. Hugely. That's, you touch on so many important things there and just the value that we can gain from investing in ourselves. And I've thought about this so many times when people say to me, like, I can't afford that or whatever. It's like, you're saying that message to the universe. You're putting out that energy that you can't afford this. And so you're not going to be able to afford it, but I think it also leans back to the side of making more money as well, because that energy, once you shift that and you expand and you open that money is just an energy. So it's going to start coming back to you as well. Like, okay, I'm willing to spend this on myself, but yes, also then it comes back to you. 
because you're saying that you're worth it and that the universe should invest in you because you're willing to invest in yourself. So it, it's a full complete cycle that I just think sometimes people aren't processing well enough or they haven't experienced it. So it's hard for them to appreciate how it actually does work like that. I can remember the first time that someone explained to me that money is just energy. And I was like, screw you. No, it's not <laughs> like, I just couldn't get that concept. And it just was like this intang intangible thing that my brain just couldn't grasp. But um, it is very much so just with, with healing in and of itself and just being open, um, remaining open to different things. And that leads me to another question. And you touched on this a lot, but for you, was there a specific time when you knew that you were healing? And I think what really I'm curious about from you is more on the spiritual side. I think you, again, kind of touched on that throughout this and talking about shamanism and grounding and um, how do you find that ties in with your healing? Did you find that to be an important, like, did you have a, an important pivotal moment where you're like, oh, I know I'm getting better? Um, there were a time that spirit was like, I'm better now. Yeah, I had quite a few of those. Um, yeah, I've had quite a few of those, like, you know, you know quick transformations and, um, yeah, almost miracle-like changes. Um, and, and at the same time, I did mistake them. They were all, like, massive improvements, but, you know, I wasn't healed. So I think a lot of, I mean, a lot of mistakes I made, and I think a lot of people make is we mistake like a, 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 a few days, weeks, or months of having less or no symptoms as a healing or a cure. And then again, if you go back to old lifestyle, it's not conducive to healing, then a lot of symptoms will recur. So um, what, you know, I, I used to get so caught up in like, oh, is this, is, am, am I healed or am I not? But the truth is, once you really get to a good place, you don't really care anymore because you're at a good place. And I have the school tools and skill set now and the Rolodex and all the pe people that I need. If something comes back, I know what to do. And also what happened every time I thought I was, quote, healed, then I also put blinders up. And when a new symptom appeared, I would just ignore it for a long period of time. Oh, that can't be Lyme coming back, you know, and then the longer you ignore it, the longer it's going to take to treat it on the other side, too. So rather than doing that, like constant flip flop back and forth, I've just learned, you know, maybe I'm healed. Maybe I'm not. It doesn't really matter. I don't have to know right now. I'm doing great. I've got a clean bill of health for my doctors. There's nothing active right now that anybody can find. And I don't have symptoms of anything. So you know what? I still know I need to keep taking care of myself and live a best lifestyle possible. Um, and yeah. And, and also, you know, maybe something comes back again. Maybe it doesn't. Again, I don't know if it will or won't. But, you know, um, that's that's what I learned through the whole process. Yeah. And, and again, just to go back to being more grateful for the days that I have great energy and feel great. And and, and through that process that uh, brings in more of that for me. So rather than taking it for granted, I'm healed throughout all these practices that I've learned. <laughs> you know, and all the things that have helped me so much. And then, you know, no, if I just keep doing that, that's actually what I've learned. And that's the path. And that's the, the lesson, right? So if I just keep doing that, then it doesn't matter. And I probably am healed. But again, doesn't matter. Yeah. And that you're making me think of another thought too. It's like, if you knew that nothing would ever come back, would you still stick with all the life practices that you've adopted as who you are now? Well, I mean, we can sit here and all say we absolutely would, but, you know, I, I can't say for sure I would, you know, I mean, we, you know, it's a, a good question. I mean, I'd like to say, sure, I'm so evolved, I definitely would, but, you know, I mean, you know, I, 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 <laughs> I, I can also be honest and say I'm not sure, you know, and, and you know, it's, it's an ever-evolving process, you know, you go through months of like, you know, or, or even longer period of time of doing the practices while remembering things, and you kind of go off track a little bit. And everybody does that, you know, everybody and every level of development can go off track a little bit. And then you get a little reminder from the universe, you've gone off and you can hear it when it's a little reminder, or again, you can wait until it gets louder and louder and louder, which in the past, I just kept waiting until like, it was like, you know, it was a little like little knock, and then it got a little, a little harder than, you know, a little harder than it was a sledgehammer, you know, I don't, I, I luckily now I'm like, I, I pray that I can hear the whisper versus the sledgehammer. <laughs> there 
<laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> I don't need that, please. You know, and if, do, <laughs> and if I do get the sledgehammer, like, please help me get, you know, help me get up quickly, you know. That's right. That's right. Oh, um, all right. And then uh, the last, last little bit kind of encapsulated some of these questions. Um, and you've already given some words of advice, but do you have any other words of advice or encouragement for people who are feeling at the end of their rope or like they're never going to get out of the darkness or that they're just stuck in the space? Sure. That sure. The, um, Yeah, the most important thing for anybody to get better is optimism and persistence. So, you know, persistence being the key when you're going to go in and out of optimism, you know, at times, but persistence is is the key. Um, you know, the other thing is, you know, the even at the darkest times, things can and will get better. Um, and the key is when you're at your darkest, you know, are you, you know, it's like, are you at the darkest and are you pushing it away or are you just surrendering to it you know um because you know a lot of times it's like okay there's a lot of things coming right now and you know again am i running from it or am i just gonna like sit here and say okay i need to feel it right now because you can't heal anything if you don't feel it right if you don't sit down and say okay i've been running from this symptom and pain and don't want to face it and don't want to talk about it but Maybe one day you you close the doors, turn the phone off, you go outside or whatever, and you just feel it all and you you ask for deeper meaning and you just cry and you feel the pain and you hurt and you just do that until it stops. Because if you feel it long enough, it will eventually stop. Now, there's a difference between feeling it and reacting to it. That's not the same thing. So a lot of people get confused with that. It's the actual feeling it, not the reactivity and all the crazy, the yell, you know, and all of these things that happen after we feel things, but just the actual feeling of it. I think I'm gifted in that area. And I think that's one of the gifts of my ability to heal so much is that I can go in and just feel those pain and allow it to just, you know, be transmuted, you know, basically to be somehow healed in a miraculous way that I can't really describe other than that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the key. And the, you know, and the other thing is knowing, you know, I, I know, I mean, it, killing, you know, a lot of people, you know, face suicide. I know with this, I'm certainly I had suicidal thoughts through this and I had, um, you know, times of that. And it's interesting. I mean, I, I had patients, I mean, I've, I've studied, you know, there's a famous uh, doctor in Czechoslovakia who has the the um, the correlation between a uh, the 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 cat toxoplasmosis and a certain type of mood disorder. I think schizophrenia. Even don't, I might be wrong here, um, but so there's personality disorders that are associated with infections. I saw this so clearly in my patients. I could identify after I had Lyme, I could tell who had Lyme and which infection just by the personality changes that they were having. Now, I can't remember that now because it's been so long and I didn't write it all down perfectly. But suicidal ideation is a symptom of certain tick infections. They actually will make you, I, I'm very confident of that because I got a freaking stem cell transplant injection where they went in to my bone and pulled stem cell out and then shot it through my blood and I, it shot it through me. And after that, I, the next day I was suicidal. I'd been perfectly happy and healthy. And the next day I was suicidal. And I was like, this is weird. And I know what it, there was an infection in my bone. There was a Lyme infection in my bone that got out and then was circulating through my blood and brain after, after that treatment. And so then I started recognizing these things like, okay, that's not me. You know, is this me or is it not me? No, that's not me. Later, I had a similar episode when the suicidal thing happened. It wasn't me. It was something happening. You know, it was outside of me, but it wasn't me. And it was so interesting because I was like, wait a second. Yesterday, I was great. And today, with this, where did this come from? Um, and, you know, also just knowing that, you know, that's never an option. You know, I, I believe in karma and rebirth. And, you know, if, you, if, we, if, we, if we do kill ourselves, we just come back with the same. We have to come back and do it again. You know, there's no, there's no, there's no outs. You know, we have to do it again. And maybe we don't have as nice a body or nice as family or nice of whatever next time. So, you know, uh, that that's kept me committed to just healing everything as much as possible, knowing I've got the best possible conditions now to, to do so. Yeah. That's a good way to think about it. And just that you're going to have to do it over again if you end it now, because I know 
too. There was many times that I thought about checking out and yeah. I've often thought, because I, I run a support group too. And I talk to a lot of people who are still struggling very much. And um, I thought it's like, is it because you feel so ratty all the time that you just want it to be over? Or is it because you have basically an alien living in your brain that's controlling things and really making you feel a certain way? Is it a combination of both? What really is it? And um, I think for me now where I am, I can see looking back, that was the illness. That was not me at all. Um, and I, I want to remind people too, of like how much better my life is now. Um, and it sounds like for you, it's like, I'm in such a better place and I am so grateful. And again, it's kind of strange, but it's like, I am thankful for this. I don't, I've kind of tried to decide if I had my choice, would I not have gone through any of this at all? Like if I could make it go back and not, I don't, I can't say that I would choose to not have ever gone through this because I wouldn't be where I am. But if I had killed myself, I wouldn't be here to enjoy this part of it. And so seven years I was sick, you know, before I got help. And that's a pretty long time to be in a dark hole, but um, you can get out of it is, is the good part. And that's when you asked, when we first met, like, what are you kind of thinking about this project? And that's really what I want to show people is that you can come out of the darkness. You can get out of the hole, no matter how long you've been stuck there, it is possible. And what we were talking about little seeds of gratitude or every little bit helps to, I think, uh, break this illness or you were talking about sledgehammers earlier. And what I picture with a sledgehammer is I've got to take a sledgehammer and hit this thing from all sides and every little bit matters and helps to break it down. Cause it's such a beast. Um, but just to never give up and that it's, it is possible, but it just takes a lot, an act of God, <laughs> if you will. Um, but gratefully he's with us through this and we're never alone. So. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And Thanks. then. Yeah. Is that you got anything else? No, I, I really think that's it. I was just going to ask if there's anything else that you feel compelled to share or. No, I think that's it. I think we cover most of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I thank you for your time and for your insight. And I am going to listen to this again and come back to that point where I was like, oh my God, that's such a good perspective that my brain is like. <laughs> right now. Um, no problem. Yeah, if, you have, yeah, if you have any more follow-up questions, just let me know. I did think it was a very valuable insight. So, um, but thank you. You're most welcome. Good luck on your project and in your career. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. And to you, please continue to shine a light and help people all we can do. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Thanks, Morgan. Bye-bye. Bye.